Eric Muller of the Exploratorium, a science museum of uh, a museum of science, art, and humor perception here in San Francisco. And I am outside of the building of the Palace of Fine Arts, and we're right next to the lagoon by the museum. If you notice today that it's a beautiful day over here, it's January, and there's no fog. So at the end of this webcast, we're going to make some fog. Just to let you know, this is the first live Science in the City webcast. And if it's coming a little bit of jittery and you like what you see, you can go back because this is going to be archived. You'll be able to watch it on YouTube and Explode TV. But what we're going to do today is we're going to work with a substance called liquid nitrogen. This stuff is cold, and because it's so cold, i got to put some safety equipment on. Goggles. And I have my glove because this is, this is thrilling. It's a thriller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly how cold liquid nitrogen is. And then we'll, we'll wander over to the lagoon over there. So I have a big tank of this stuff over here. It's in a special tank to make sure it's insulated so it doesn't evaporate away. And I'm going to pour it into my container over here. This stuff is really, really cold. This stuff is about 200 degrees below zero Celsius, 196, or it's about a little over 320 degrees below zero Fahrenheit, for those of you that are fans of Fahrenheit. So first demonstration I'm going to show you to show you how cold this stuff is, is I'm going to take this rose. And a rose, obviously, is really nice and supple, but it has a lot of water inside of it. And this stuff, like I said, is cold. And when you put water into something that is really cold, it freezes into ice. So what I'm doing is I'm turning the water in the petals into ice. Lots and lots of tiny ice crystals. And also you might notice that the liquid nitrogen is bubbling. That's because it is boiling. It actually boils at this temperature. But that's not boiling like boiling water. It is boiling like liquid nitrogen. So this is a rose that's been frozen solid. And if I touch it, it breaks and actually sounds like glass. I'm going to show you some more stuff with the liquid nitrogen, too, to show you how cold this stuff is. I'm going to take this big container of liquid nitrogen, and I'm going to fill up this container over here with it. And while that's happening, I'm going to blow up some balloons. And I'm going to fill the balloon up. with my breath, or basically air. And I'm going to put these balloons, or at least this one balloon, into a container of this liquid nitrogen, which is basically liquid air. Almost 80% of the air you breathe is this stuff right here. Let me see if this will fit. Yeah, it'll fit. We'll make it fit. So I'm going to take the top off of this really big container. <clears throat> and I'm going to, whoa, this is a lot of liquid nitrogen. And I'm going to pour it into this container right here. This balloon doesn't even fit right now. Remember, this is filled with air. This is liquid air. And actually, I'm going to use two gloves this time. Nah, I'll just use one glove. It'll work. And watch what happens to the balloon. So it looks like water, but it's not. Like I said, this stuff is cold. And this stuff is so cold that if I take out this balloon, it almost looks like it's paper. And 
given a second, the air that was frozen, it's actually a liquid on the bottom of this, given a couple seconds, it will boil back out and turn back into a gas. And it's back. I can still hear a little bit shaking around inside of there. But it'll come back to its full size. So another interesting property of liquid nitrogen is if you take objects that are organic, like these rubber balls, and I want to make sure I don't make those things fall over the place. If I put one of them inside the liquid nitrogen, remember, these things bounce pretty well. I'm actually going to add even more to there. So that ball is being cooled down inside of here, getting colder and colder and colder. And actually, if you can hear it, I don't know if you can, but there's a weird crunchy sound on the ball. So remember, this ball, mushy, rubbery, rubber. And this ball over here, I'm going to take out. Oop. You know what? I'm going to try this, this device right here. Much easier. And you can hear that. It sounds really hard. And actually, let me show you how hard this thing is. If I do it like this, it actually sounds quite different. And if I take this ball and throw it on the ground, it actually breaks like glass. This ball, still regular. And this other one over here, actually, until it cools down, will actually have shards like broken glass, too. And lastly, I want to show you, here's an inorganic thing, which I'm going to cool down. And I'm going to cool this one back inside of this container over here. No, actually, let's use this container right over here. This one, I still have a couple of petals from the flowers in there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some pennies. And on these pennies, I have some old pennies. And they're probably, this one is from 1980. And the other one is from 76. And I'm going to take some new pennies, which are from the 2000s. And I'm going to throw these four pennies, the new ones and the old ones, into liquid nitrogen. Oop. And I'm going to let them sit there for a little bit. And just to let you know that pennies changed formulas back in around 1982, 83-ish or so. They changed from being mostly copper to mostly zinc. And the interesting thing is that zinc and copper have different properties when they're cooled down. So it turns out that copper when hit by a hammer, it's still pretty much just like the regular copper that you know and love, but in this case it's going to be much cooler. But the other penny, which is mostly zinc, well, watch what happens when you cool down a penny that is made of mostly zinc. So here are, is the copper penny. Not much happens. Here is a new penny, mostly zinc. It breaks up. Just like glass again, zinc responds to cold quite differently than the copper does. So now you got the idea that liquid nitrogen is incredibly cold stuff. So like I said, over here by the Palace of Fine Arts, we have this great lagoon. Oh, by the way, we're only going to be here for one more year, so make sure you get down here before we leave this area. One more year at this great location. So over here, great day. No fog, but we're going to try to make some fog right now. So I'm going to take this liquid nitrogen, which is basically liquid air, and I'm going to throw this stuff into our lagoon over there. Just to let you know that when I throw it in, water has a really high heat capacity.
that means that the water in this lagoon's not going to change temperature too much. It's an incredibly minuscule fraction of a degree. But what it is going to do, it's going to take this liquid nitrogen and heat it up and turn it into a gas. And when it turns it into a gas, that cold gas, which is heavier than the rest of the air, even though this is regular, this is going to be regular air, but it's going to be a lot colder, it's going to stay near the surface of the water. And as it spreads out, that cold air is going to condense all the vapor that's right above this pond over here. And let's see if we can make some fog here at the Exploratorium in January. So I'm going to go down to the lagoon. Is everybody ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Fog at the Exploratorium in January on a perfectly clear day. Well, that's our first Science in the City live webcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you come back and visit the uh, site some more. See you some other time. Bye-bye.